Inverted Paleo Channels, Testimony to an Ancient Earth. Hello, I'm Joel Duff from the naturalhistorian.com. And today I want to talk to you for a few minutes about an interesting geological feature on the on Earth that maybe you've never heard of before, called an inverted paleo channel or an inverted valley. I want to introduce you to these uh, interesting features and then talk a little bit about uh, what they tell us about the history of the Earth. First of all, what's an inverted paleo channel? An inverted paleo channel is a fossilized river channel that today sits at higher elevation than the surrounding area. Well, I don't know if that tells you a whole lot, so maybe we need to look a little closer at some pictures. Let's go to St. George, Utah. So this is a satellite image uh, from Google Images uh, looking down on the city of St. George. And uh, you know, you'll see the familiar uh, city scene, but there is another interesting feature here. Let me get my pen out. Uh, and that feature sits right over here on the left side of your figure. And you'll notice there's this strange, this is actually a flat topped hill. And on top of this flat hill is an airport. Now they didn't place the airport there, but you know, they didn't look at this hill and go, let's flatten off that hill and build an airport there. No, they, somebody looked at the hill and said, it already has a flat top. What a great place for an airport. And so they built this airport right on top of this hill overlooking the city of St. George. Now this raises an interesting question. Where did this flat hill come from? How does a hill get a flat top naturally? Um, that's not the only flat hill that's here. Uh, on the other side, on the right side of St. George here, we see there's another flat hill and there's a neighborhood sitting on top. Uh, these brown uh, areas on the sides, these are very steep hills. Uh, running down to the rest of the city. All right, so where, where does that come from? Well, here's a street view image from Google again showing uh, a drive on top of one of these flat hills. In fact, this is next to the airport. So this road along the side of the airport looks down on the city. So here's St. George over here. And then what you'll see are these black boulders. All right, so there's these black rock and there's these black boulders and they're actually kind of rolling down this hill. That's your first hint as to what's going on here. These black boulders are basalt or uh, hardened lava. So this is volcanic material uh, that sits up on top of this hill. But how did it get there? I mean, how do you get black? How do you get lava on top of a hill? The story goes a little bit like this. Now, this is the conventional geological um, explanation. So this area of, if you don't know southern uh, Utah. Um, uh, if you know anything, I guess you'd know there's a lot of red rock there, right? It's sandstone. It's a, a type of sedimentary rock. The idea is that there's many, many different layers of sedimentary rock that have formed over time, laid down on top of each other. So this whole area is covered by sedimentary material. Then later in time, there was a, uh, a erosion of that sedimentary rock by streams and rivers, right? Forming these valleys. All right, so we have a valley that forms into this eroded rock. And then somewhere, at some later point in time, you had a volcanic eruption. So lava comes up from deep in the earth, oozes out onto the surface of the, uh, of the ground, and then lava does, it's a liquid, and so it runs to the lowest elevation place, which would be in the valley. So it runs down into the valleys, and it, and it sits down on the bottom of the valleys, and even maybe fills up the valley. Well, erosion continues to take place over time after this volcanic eruption. And as erosion occurs, the sandstone is easily eroded, whereas the basalt now that is hardened uh, in these valleys is much more resistant to erosion. And as a result, the valley walls erode down, uh, and eventually they continue to erode even further down by, by various forces. But the basalt acts as kind of a cap or a protective layer over the sandstone below it. And so eventually what happens is the, the land around where the basalt is ends up at a lower elevation and the basalt now sits up above on top of this valley. So that's what we have in St. George is you have this flat top uh, hill because the basalt was flat as it, as it laid down in that valley and then it protected it against erosion and the sides now are running down into lower elevations. So let's, let's look a little bit further at, at this. So how can we show that this is what's happened in the St. George area? So what I've done here in these maroon lines is I've gone around and I've shown you where the edge of various la layers of basalt are that are evident at the surface. 
so there are these large up here there are these large areas of basalt but you'll see then the basalt runs down here in what looks like uh, almost like a river valley right there's another one over here there's actually a little bit of salt here and then the basalt runs around here um, and then this basalt runs down through here there's a little patch here a patch here it's as if this area has eroded out and then continues on down through the airport what you're visualizing are ancient river beds Right? These were ancient rivers that existed in what used to be much higher elevation layers of sandstone. And that sandstone then had these uh, rivers in it. Then you had farther up to the north here, you had a volcanic eruption, which then laid out all kinds of lava that flowed down these rivers, hardened. And then this area, especially down here, has eroded a lot. All right, resulting in these large valleys where these where these cities are, and there's still a lot of red sandstone left in these areas that continue to to erode. So this this suggests a a long history of many different events occurring over time, each of which probably took long periods of time. Although the volcanic eruptions would have been really the the shortest time frame um, of things that happened. Now. Is this the only place we see inverted paleo channels or inverted rivers? No, it's not. There's other places on Earth where we see the same thing. Uh, and you don't have to go very far. You just have to go up a little farther north in central Utah and you can find another form of inverted valley. Now these inverted valleys are actually formed uh, in a very similar way, but they have, a, um, they have one difference. But first, let's, let's take a look at them. Over here is the Green River. All right, that's, that's a real river that exists right now today and it's in a large canyon. And what I've, what I've outlined in maroon are a series of ridges that run through the landscape in this very desert landscape. So it looks like what looks like stream beds and it looks like, okay, these are feeder rivers over here to the Green River except they don't actually go into the Green River. And they're not actually valleys at all. They're ridges. It's going to be a little hard to demonstrate that. Let's let's take a look. So what I'm talking about here is this. Here's a ridge right here, and it's as if oh, you know, it joins another stream right here, and here's a stream, and it comes around here and goes on over here. See, don't these look like rivers? But if you look closely at these, these aren't these aren't valleys. These are ridges. It's hard to see in this image. So let's go to the next one. Oh, actually, the next one is showing another one of these. What looks like a meandering river or stream. Again, these are elevated, inverted paleo channels. Now you can see what it looks like, right? So now if we, if we tip it and we see more of a 3D view, we'll see that what I was outlining before is this meandering stream, except that the stream is sitting 150 to 200 feet higher than the surrounding area. How does this happen? Let's take a little closer look. How does it happen? Well, if you'll see, there's kind of this, this hard, there's, there's this edge to it right here. Um, these are conglomerate rocks, and conglomerate rock is a is a rock that's formed from uh, essentially gravel that is then cemented together. And so, what you imagine is that this is the bottom of a river, right? So the top of this the top of this ridge is the bottom of a river. That bottom of the river is a lot of gravel and material has been brought from somewhere else. It's been cemented together over time just by. Um, because it is wet all the time and it's been brought other things have been brought with it um, and as it's after it hardened um, and this landscape dried up at some point it was left with these hard basins well erosion continued and erosion of this material over here of these clays and, and some sand uh, was much much easier than it was to erode these um, conglomerates and so, once again, the surrounding area eroded down. Imagine the amount of time that takes to erode all this area down, leaving just this uh, channel elevated that has been protected from erosion by this hard cap. And you'll see these steep walls, and there's actually these steep boulders made of conglomerate that have broken off the edge of the bottom of this, what used to be valley, and have fallen down. So again, it's the same type of thing. You have sedimentary rock form, or in this case, uh, a lot of shales, actually. Um, uh, which are at the bottom of, of, of seabeds and so forth. And then you have uh, the area maybe drying out some and you have rivers forming which then erode. And then, But instead of basalt now, you just have the bottom of the river full of gravel which then hardens and then you have this inverted valley form. So all these, all these things take, uh, there are a series of events that, that take time. Now the other thing I want to think about here is um, 
now that we've looked at this progression of events, we want to think about how does this relate to the question of my subtitle, A Testimony to an Ancient Earth. How does this uh, show us that the world really is very old? Young Earth creationists uh, believe the world is no more than 6,000 years old and that it has experienced a global flood. And that global flood 4,350 years ago or so uh, is, the, is implicated as the creator of all the different geological formations we see today. Um, the geological flood is said to have laid all the sediments down. And then after the flood receded from the earth, it then carved the various geological formations we see today. So what we're seeing here today is we're seeing a series of a, a, a geological formation, but I've shown you that it requires a progressive series of events in order to produce that particular formation. Um, you have the sedimentary rock being formed. Global, global flood advocates would say, well, that's all laid down in this flood within a few months. But then you have the erosion of a valley that forms in those flood sediments. Then that valley has to be filled with something. And say in this case uh, you have a volcanic uh, eruption has to occur. And then you have to have continued erosion after that. Where does this happen during and in the middle of the flood? The area of southwest, southwest Utah has looked just like it's looked for a very long period of time. There are uh, artifacts there that suggest that for at least 4,000 years, probably 10,000 years, these areas have looked just like we see them today. There hasn't been massive erosion in any uh, recent time. So once again, this, these types of features on Earth really scream out, wow, the Earth is really old. It's undergone a lot of historical events, and each one of those historical events has required some long time period in order to fully develop and give us the amazing features that we see today. But is this the only place on Earth, uh, the only place we see these things? No. Interestingly, we see paleo channels on the surface of Mars as well, which is where we study today. We study the features of the Earth, we examine them and figure out how they've been produced, and then we can look at features on Mars and we can say, there must be similar processes that have occurred there as well. Once again, evidence that Mars has also experienced a long history of events uh, and changes uh, through time. So I'm showing you as a couple uh, images, satellite images of the surface of Mars. In this case, I'll just highlight uh, these little channels here, right? And many people have noted these look like these look like little stream beds, right? Looks like little channels that are drawing water away, and then they go into larger channels and so forth, and into even larger rivers. And what it's hard to tell here is that once again, these are not valleys, right? And these are are not valleys; they are inverted channels they sit up higher than the rest of the landscape. So it's as if water ran on the surface of Mars in the past, creating valleys. But in those valleys where the water was, the sediments there were cemented there together in a different way, making them more erosion resistant. And so then when erosion continued to occur for hundreds of millions of years in the case of Mars, because it's just wind, uh, and that takes a long time in order to erode this rock, as erosion continued, these channels no longer are channels, but they're inverted channels where they sit up above the, the surrounding area. And these are found in a number of different locations on Mars, just like they're found on Earth. So this suggests that, the, that Mars has experienced similar conditions in the past um, to what we see here on Earth. So lastly, I'll just say that there's a lot of inverted things uh, on Earth that require um, a series of events. So for example, here's my family at Devil's Tower in Wyoming. And Devil's Tower is a, is a plug of, of magma that is exuded up through the earth, uh, in which case this whole area used to be layers of rock in here, layers of sandstone. Uh, and lava came up and pushed on through there and may have spilled out over on the top of the surface, but um, eventually this whole area eroded. Right? This has experienced long periods of erosion, and this rock right here is very resistant to erosion, and so that's why we see it sitting up above the surface today. Um, this takes a long time. Uh, and again, this area looks very similar to the way it did four or 5,000 years ago. It's very difficult to insert a global flood explanation for how features like this occur, whereas conventional geological explanations um, are very adept uh, and very successful at explaining very plausible ways that these these things that we see um, and how they well it explains very well how the things we see could be could be formed over long periods of time. 
Well, that's it. There's your introduction to inverted paleo channels for today. Thank you very much for your time.